I thought so. a much neglected theologian is Thomas Cranmer. Uh, Thomas Cranmer um, was born in Nottinghamshire on July 2nd, 1489, and the son of Thomas Cranmer, senior, and his wife Angus in Headfield. He was educated at Cambridge from the age of 14, and in 1530 became Archdeacon of Taunton. Uh, during his life, uh, he he um, he worked uh, under the reign of Henry VIII and he compromised quite a bit with him and um, I think he felt guilty about that uh, but he was really important in the development of the prayer book the common prayer book uh, of trying to keep the traditions of the past with uh, developing Anglican liturgy and, and trying to keep the Anglican Church also to the Bible um, King Edward the Sixth, um, he came into conflict with, and the king wanted him eventually dead. And um, Cranmer did to and fro, uh, accepting what the king wanted. Then he recanted, and and he ended up being burnt. But Cranmer has written a lot of deep theological works, and certainly worth uh, worth a read. Okay. Hi folks, hope you're okay today. We're looking at uh, James Denny, uh, 1856 to 1917. He was a Scottish theologian and preacher. And um, Denny uh, studied under some of the great theologians, Scotch theologians of the time, such as, uh, I think, Candlish. Um, just get the right name there. Uh, yeah, uh, Robert S. Candlish, A. B. Bruce, T. M. Lindsay, etc. Um, when he became a minister, um, he was he had kind of liberal tendencies, but he married his wife, and his wife um, was evangelical, and she introduced him to reading Charles Spurgeon sermons, and those really impacted him, and he began to move away from his liberalism. Now, um, Denny's scholarship was pretty formidable. It was a great scholarship. He wrote some really good commentaries. So if you ever see them on uh, Book Archive or whatever, get all of those books because they'd be helpful for you. Um, but he wrote the the book. Uh, so let's see. which uh, I'm going to link to. He wrote this book, uh, The Death of Christ. And this book is a very, very good book uh, if you want to understand the atonement uh, from a biblical point of view. He, he looks at each of the various books of the New Testament and takes the words about the atonement. Um, it's interesting to note that Many people today who were reformed and Calvinistic uh, and many historians of theology today think Denny was a conservative theologian. It's not completely true. If you read the book, it's clear that he, he's moved away from his, uh, the liberalism, but he's still got a little bit of taint of the higher criticism, liberalism still left in him. Although he's definitely moved, he's definitely been converted He's definitely moved over to more conservative kind of theology and he definitely takes up the cudgels against a lot of the German theology but he's still got a little bit mixed in because of his training and because of where he came from as a liberal theologian. He still has a few little issues there that unless you read the book and you know the history of theology you would detect. You wouldn't detect. But he definitely is um, a man of God, definitely written some great books and worth reading. Hi folks, hope you're okay, it's good to be with you. I just want to recommend reading uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky, a Russian novelist, um, born 11th of November 1821, 9th of February 1880, 1881. And... Um, He's a Russian writer. He basically um, 
got involved with a study group that wanted to think about utopian ideas. Uh, he he was arrested. He was going to get shot with his mates. But the Tsar stepped in. He went to Siberia. He spent uh, some about four years there. And it was basically traumatized by that. He was only allowed to read one book there. So he, he read the Bible. And there he, he had a religious experience where he became a tenacious backer of the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, when he came out, he began to write some of his books where Underground and others where he's critiquing materialism and um, all the various philosophies of the time. And some of his great works like Crime and Punishment and Brothers of Kamemorov. Uh, what's it? can't pronounce it. Um, Brothers uh, Karamazov. Um, again, explored... Uh, issues of justice and the justice of God, uh, issues about Christ um, and the meaning of life. Definitely someone to read and I'll link you to his works. Hi folks, we're looking at the theologian um, Alfred Erdersheim. Erdersheim was born in March 7, 1825 uh, from a Jewish family in the city of Vienna and uh, around 1845 he moved to Perth, Hungary, where he met John Duncan, a Scottish theologian. Um, Erdersheim is responsible for writing some of the greatest books on uh, Christian theology, especially the life of Christ. And um, he He studied uh, at Scotland, uh, at theological seminary there, became a minister in Scotland. Um, when he got ill health, he had to move down to uh, places like Bournemouth and other places uh, down south. But he, uh, his books are so rich because in being a Jew, he writes about the life of Christ and about... Uh, he, another book he wrote uh, is about the temple because he's Jewish uh, he has all this information about Judaism at his disposal disposal uh, concerning the first century so his writings are tremendously rich and uh, absolute classics I would encourage you to to read them hi folks okay I hope you're okay uh, our last theologian and theological resource today is Jonathan Edwards um, if you see my YouTube channels, you'll see a picture of him. Jonathan Edwards was born on October, October 5th, 1703, and died March 9th, uh, 22nd, 1758. Um, he was born in East Windsor, Connecticut, to Timothy Edwards, pastor of East Windsor, and Esther Edwards, the only son in a family of 11 children. He entered Yale in September uh, 1716 when he was not yet 13 and graduated four years later 1720 he didn't like the Calvinist theology at first but then uh, he was converted and he said he loved it um, he then went on to get ordained as a minister he would spend 13 hours a day a day in study uh, that beggars belief uh, and he, he took over his granddad's church. He got into big trouble there because he he believed in a closed communion, not an open communion. But during his tenureship there as a minister, he was used mightily in revival. And he became one of the great philosophers and theologians that America's ever produced. Uh, he wrote books on freedom of the will, um, on revival, and a number of other works. So tremendous theologian and well worth your time to study him.